Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to invest in growth stocks. Uh, we're going to look at how to invest in index growth funds and also individual stocks. So let's get straight to it. Uh, before we begin, you know, as always, I appreciate it if you like, subscribe to the YouTube channel as that helps with the YouTube algorithm. So let's get straight to it. Okay, so I'm using my Fidelity investment platform here and I basically searched VOOG up here in the uh, search bar. And this is basically the Vanguard S&P 500 growth index. And it's a, it's a growth index fund that has all of the US uh, growth companies. So if you wanted to get a better idea of what companies are in this fund, uh, we can just go ahead and click on the portfolio holdings. And we see that uh, there's the top 10 holdings are Apple, which is 12% of the portfolio, Microsoft, 10%, Amazon, Facebook, Tesla's in here, Google, NVIDIA, and there's uh, about 232 total companies in this fund. And so you can click view all holdings and you will get a list of all the companies that it holds. You, you also see that 99% of the, of the stocks are in North America with very, very little uh, European and no Africa, Middle East, Latin, or Asia stocks. So very heavy uh, US uh, index fund here for growth stocks. Um, and if you wanna get an idea of what type of industries these companies are in, you see that 41% are in technology, 17% consumer discretionary, 13% communication services, and, and so forth uh, down here below. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, so if we wanted to compare the returns of the growth, the Vanguard growth fund versus the S&P 500, we can look kind of look at this chart here and just uh, hit compare and click on S&P 500. Uh, you see that this, uh, I'll just close that. You see that the growth fund has actually outperformed the S&P 500 over the last decade and, and basically has outperformed the S&P 500 by almost, uh, actually more than 100%. So that's might be one of the reasons why you want to look into growth stocks. And, and typically growth stocks have a higher earning potential just because you know these are up and coming companies that are investing a lot in research and development and innovation. And so there's a higher chance that these companies are able to scale versus you know your your big large cap blue chip companies that have been around and are not really investing for the future. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I invest in growth stocks just because there, there's a, a greater potential for growth in the long term. And, and we can see it based off this 10 year chart. Now, if we wanted to get actual numbers on performance, uh, we can click on this, how is it performing, and see more. And here we can basically see uh, percentage-wise how, how well this fund has done. So over the life of the fund, it looks like the, the growth uh, ETF here has done 17%, uh, which is really good compared to the S&P 500. Uh, on a 10-year average, this company has done 16% versus the S&P 500 it did 16% as well. Uh, Five-year average, we did a little bit better with 18% over 15%. And then in the last three years, this fund has really taken off. As you see in the third year, uh, it has averaged 20% annual returns versus 14% for the S&P 500. And then the last year, 33% uh, versus the 18%. So technology and growth stocks are really taking off in this last year uh, here in 2021. Um, so... If you wanted to sort of a, a very easy, quick, and, and fast way to invest in growth stocks, you could really just invest in this in this growth ETF here. Uh, now, there's a couple other growth ETFs as well that you can compare. Uh, there's the Vanguard S&P 500 growth index. There's the Spider Portfolio S&P 500 growth. Uh, there's also the iShares S&P 500 growth, and there's other also ETFs that you can invest in. And, and basically, uh, this allows you to just get an instant diversified portfolio of all these different companies that are considered to be growth, and as you see here are the top 10 holdings. Uh, so that's a very quick and easy way to, to, to uh, invest in growth stocks. Um, now, if you wanted to take more of a uh, individual stock approach, uh, you, you have to do a little bit more research, and, and we can go over that research now. So let's, let's figure out, you know, how we can find some growth stocks if we want to basically look at individual companies. Um, so I'm going to go to news and research and I'm going to go ahead and click on stocks. And I should get a list of industries here. So there's a couple industries that I can choose from. Um, I, I can look at cons uh, communication services, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, energy, financials, healthcare, industrials, info technology, materials, real estate, utilities. So when I look at these these industries, I want to basically figure out, you know, what what are some high growing, uh, uh, high expectation growing industries, and I think about technology, I think about healthcare, 
I think about you know consumer brands and maybe even take uh, consumer uh, communication services. So let's take a look at some uh, information technology companies, and we can get a, a, a list of all these different types of companies. So I want to basically go to find investments, and I should be able to pull up a list of all the various technology companies, and we can basically do a quick analysis and and. By trying to figure out, you know, the growth stocks. So we're going to go to valuation, growth, and ownership. And we should be able to download an Excel file. So here are all the companies. And I'm going to go ahead and download this Excel versions in valuation, growth, ownership. Uh, so I can do some big data uh, filtering here as well. Okay. So uh, when, we're, when we're looking for growth stocks, uh, we're actually not too concerned with the price to earnings ratio uh, because a lot of the times growth stocks will have a high P ratio and, and that can be an indicator that you know this company has a high uh, expectation for growth so because of that expectation uh, investors are typically usually willing to pay a, a premium for the company so just because a, a company has a high P ratio doesn't mean that it's a bad investment uh, and the way that we can kind of determine this is by tying the P ratio with the pay ratio. So I'm going to do a quick filter here and I basically want to kind of organize my data here. Um, what I'm looking for is the pay ratio which is the price to earnings growth ratio and what this growth ratio, what this ratio basically kind of lays out for you, uh, it, it basically um, kind of gives you a better idea of how this company is priced and is it keeping up to the, the current growth of what it's priced at? So you kind of get a trade-off in sense in the sense of like, okay, it has a high P/E ratio, but it has uh, you know strong earnings per share growth. So maybe there's a, an opportunity there if if it's if it has a, a pretty good growth ratio. So we're gonna organize this data from biggest to smallest, uh, and and basically uh, we we want to look for companies that have. Uh, closest to one peg ratio because because if a company has uh, a one peg ratio it, it's a good indicator that the company is growing at the same rate at in terms of what it's priced at now if a company has a really high peg ratio then it could mean this company is overvalued because it's not growing it uh, at, at the same rate in terms of what the of the company is priced at so like for example this company here nuance communications has a 488 uh, P ratio and a 95 peg ratio. So if we took this stock and went back to our Fidelity platform, uh, we can see some of the characteristics of this stock, and we can, you know, we can kind of keep an eye out to make sure, you know, we're not making a bad choice here. Uh, so Nuance Communications, uh, you know, let's take a look at some of the financials and stats, and we can get an idea of what a company with a high pay ratio and a high pay ratio looks like. Um, so right away, you know, it looks like it's in the software industry. It's trading at 488 times earnings compared to the industry average of 60. So it's, it's I mean, it could technically be considered overvalued. Now, in terms of the pay ratio, it's 95 compared to the industry of four. So this is a really big red flag because the industry average is four pay ratio you want the company to have somewhat closer to the industry average, if not better, or closer to one. So let's look at some of the the the, the stats here. Revenue in the, in the last five years has decreased 5% uh, compared to the industry average has increased 15%. So this is another big indicator here. The company is generating declining revenue, uh, which is not good um, for a growth company. For a growth company, you want a company that has strong revenue and if not better than the industry average okay so it looks like they have some positive free cash flow in the last 12 months so that's pretty good uh, the margins the pre-tax margins so, so this is the profitability is 0.68 percent um, compared to the industry average of 26 percent so this is another big red flag is when you're looking for growth companies you're looking for uh, profitable companies and if not equal to the, the industry average better so right away we can see that this stock is not performing well at all and it could be considered overvalued uh, especially with the high P ratio so I think we I think we discovered enough here so we know that's the company that we don't want to look at um, so now let's go back to our spreadsheet here and we can do some some filtering here so 
before we do some filtering, let's go ahead and delete all of the stocks where we don't have any ratios. So it looks like anything from here, we don't have any peg ratios. So we're just going to go ahead and delete this. I don't think it's worth the time. Maybe it is, but I'm not going to go through this long list of companies uh, where I can't look at the ratios. Okay, and the next thing I want to do is I want to figure out what is the average uh, P ratio and also what is the average peg ratio. There we go. So it looks like the average peg ratio in this industry is 7.62%. And the peg ratio is one, uh, 126 uh, P ratio. So we know this is the average. So I think we, I think it's safe to say that anything below seven might be uh, worth looking into. So I'm just going to go ahead and do an, an additional filter, and I'm going to say uh, anything that is less than uh, seven, I want to go ahead and look at. And that should have gotten rid of all anything above seven. Okay, so it looks like we did some additional filtering, uh, but the companies that I'm going to spend a, a lot more time is on these companies here that is closest to one uh, because because this tells me that th these companies are growing just about the same rates of of the current of what is currently priced at now it, it might be worth looking into some of these stocks where it's less than one but again we might run into some similar problems that you know they either have declining cash flows or declining revenue or decreasing margins uh, but it's definitely something to look into uh, in terms of, you know, you might be able to find some good deals uh, on these. But for the most part, I think, you know, we can find some pretty good deals with pay ratios of one. So any any of these companies might be a good uh, company. So let's just take, for example, let's take MKS. So it has a pay ratio of 1.3 and it has a P ratio of, of 36 times. So this might be a good company. Let's take a look. So we'll go back to our Fidelity platform and we're going to search MKS. And we'll type it in here, the search bar. Now, it uh, looks like this is MKS Instruments Information Technology. It's a middle size or mid-cap company, so decent size, not too, not too large. So that could be, uh, you know, some growing potential there. And let's look at the financials. Um, okay, so key, to, key statistics. Okay, so we have some P ratios. Uh, it looks like the P ratio is 36 times, uh, slightly lower than the industry average. Looks like it's a semiconductor industry. Uh, 1.3 peg ratio compared to the industry average of 3.2. So that's a really good sign because it's, it tells me that this company is growing at a much better rate than the competitors in the industry. Okay, uh, another thing we can look at is uh, we have enterprise value. Let's look at growth. Um, so the revenue within the last five years has increased 19% compared to the industry average of 10%. So this is a really strong positive uh, indicator that this could be a good company is they have a higher revenue growth than the industry average so pretty good uh, forward earnings per share long-term growth rate for the next three to five years is expected 28 percent compared to the industry average so another positive sign there and it looks like they have some positive cash flows as well free cash flow that is okay let's go look at profitability uh, so 15 percent margins compared to the industry of 24 percent so maybe there's a, this might be something you want to look further into. Um, although it's not as good as the market, as the industry, uh, it's, it's a little bit less. Uh, but we will look at profitability uh, for deeper, and, and, I'll, and, and we will discuss what we want to look for in terms of profitability. Okay, so in terms of returns, looks like equity, return on equity is 13% compared to the industry of 36%. So a little bit less than the industry average. In terms of the balance sheet, it looks like this company is 27% debt to asset ratio uh, compared to the industry average. So this is pretty good. It has They have a, a pretty low, reasonable amount of debt, so you don't have to worry about the company having too much debt. And the way you can uh, further gauge that is by looking at the current ratio. And it looks like they have 4.5 times uh, current uh, assets over current liabilities. So they, they, it looks like they have plenty of cash on their balance sheet to be able to meet their short-term obligation uh, compared to the industry average of 2.8. The only concern I would have here is that they're sitting on too much cash. Um, now, they, they could be because maybe they're they're holding on to the cash and they're maybe uh, waiting to invest it in some research and development. Uh, so we can go ahead and take a look at that by looking at the financials. So the two things we're going to look at is we're going to look at the profitability uh, in the last five years. And we're going to look at the 
um, cash flow statement to see if the company is investing in, in R&D. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the in income statement for the last five years. And we basically want to do a very quick uh, profitability check. So in 2015, it looks like they generated uh, $122 million uh, in profit. And so we're going to divide that by the total amount of sales, which is $814. And we get a profit margin of 14.9%. Of um, now I'm going to fast forward to the next year, which is 2016. And we have a $105 million divided by $1.2 billion. So we're going to go $1.295 billion. And it looks like there's actually a less profit margin here. Let's go forward to the next year. We have $339 million. Divide that by $1,916,000,000. And that gives us a profit margin of 17%. So they had a, a, a really big increase from 16, 2016 to 2017. So that's a good indicator. And then let's move on to the next year. We have $393 million in profit. Divided by $2 billion and... 75 million, 18% profit margin, so that's pr pretty good, better than last year. And then finally, in 2019, we have uh, $140 million to $1 billion, 900 million in sales, and we're back to 7% 7, uh, 7 profit margin. So something's happening with this company where they're not consistently generating uh, more profits. Now, in terms of sales, you have a positive increase year over year, all the way up to 2019. So it might be uh, worth looking into the last year to figure out why they got lower sales. Um, now we can also kind of gauge to see how they're doing this year by looking at the quarterly statements. And if we just kind of add up the, the total here, they did 536 million in the first quarter, they did 544 million in the second quarter, as you see here, and then they did um, 590 million in the third quarter. So they're trending at about, they're at $1.6 billion. Uh, so if they, assuming that they do at least 500 million, they should be able to clear um, at least uh, two, two billion dollars in, in sales. Um, so that's pretty good given that their last year they did 1.9. So it looks like they'll be back, back on track in 2018 if they continue the trend. Um, okay, so now let's look at the cash flow statement. And we're going to see if they're, if this company is, is investing in, in projects. And so uh, let's see they're investing. So it looks like they they have some capital expenditures here. Uh, 12 million, 19 million, 31 million, 63 million, 64. So they're definitely making some investments. Uh, let's go back to the balance sheet and see if there's any R&D. Um, so maybe we might have to look further deeper into. So... So currently, I mean, this seems like a, you know, it seems like a, uh, a stock worth looking more into and doing more research. Uh, I think a couple more questions that we need to answer is figuring out, um, you know, the, the, the fluctuating profit margins from, from the last year to the next year. I mean, we, we obviously saw some good years in 2017 and 2018, um, but there are some periodic years where we see uh, a reducing um uh, profit margin. Now we, I mean, it's it's obviously going to be in the uh, expenses here because you see like expenses are going up as well. Uh, we basically want to figure out like what are those expenses going into? Is it going to R and D or is it going towards more ge general and, and administrative expenses? And just get a better understanding of uh, the the overall expenses for this company. So you so right away you see the level of research that you have to go do for individual stocks. Now it it it, it could be worth the the effort to search for companies like these that you know could potentially generate you greater returns. Um, and this is great for individual stock picking. Um, or you know you can also you can always revert back to investing in in some sort of like uh, growth ETF uh, index fund to save yourself time from not having to do all this research. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Appreciate it if you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thank you.